This first game of the 1942 World Series broadcast is coming to you from Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. We're waiting for Red Ruffing to come out of the Yankee dugout. Red being on basic a little longer, coming out this time than usual. The Yankees are out in front five to nothing as we come into the last half of the eighth inning. Morton Cooper is out of the ball game. Harry Gumbert took over. Should be Harry Gumbert's turn to bat, but we see Harry Walker coming up, the brother of the Dodgers, Dixie Walker. Little Dixie, they call him. He's a left-handed batter. The announcement being made over the public address system here at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. On deck is Jimmy Brown, then will come Terry Moore. Fans are settling back, wondering. A lot of wondering going on in these stands right now. Roughing, blowing on that pitching hand. Leans forward a little bit. Into his windup. In comes the pitch to Harry Walker. Swung on and missed for strike three. He went all the way around. That's strikeout number eight for Ed Ruffing. And with that put out, Red Ruffing tied a World Series record. A record which we will give to you in a little while. We're going to hold it for the moment. For a reason, which we'll tell you later. Here's Jimmy Brown up. First pitch is swung on. It's fly ball going out to the short left field. Rizzuto racing out. Keller coming in, fails under it, and makes the catch for the out. And with that out, Red Ruffing sets a new World Series record. And again, we respecting an age-old tradition. Won't tell you just what it is at the moment. But in due time, we will tell you. So don't go away. Here's Terry Moore stepping up. Two outs. Last half of the eighth inning. Five to nothing. Favor the Yankees. Terry Moore bats from right-handed. Ruffing's first pitch. Swung on. There's a smash and the first hit of the ball game. Out into right field. Holding it first is Terry Moore as Roy Cullenbine throws in to Joe Gordon at second. So there it is. The time has come now when we can tell you. That's the first hit off Red Ruffing, who went seven and two-thirds innings without allowing a base hit. The longest anybody ever went without allowing a hit in the World Series was Herb Tannock against the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1927. He went seven and third innings. Into the eighth with one out. Ruffing went into the eighth with two outs. In comes the pitch to Enos Slaughter, and it's all over there for a call strike. So Terry Moore with the two outs in the eighth inning. Line one to the left to Joe Gordon. A solid base hit. Ruffing takes a stretch, takes his runner. Pitches in the slaughter. Who swings. There's a drive going deep to the left center. Joe DiMaggio racing over. Keller's going. DiMaggio still going, getting under it, and makes the catch for the out. And so for the Cardinals in the last of the eighth. No runs. One hit. Their only hit of the ball game. No errors for the Yankees. One man left on. And the score at the end of eight innings. Five to nothing in favor of New York. As we go into the ninth inning, left-hander Max Lanier is taking the mound for the Cardinals. Harry Gumbert, who pitched only one-third of an inning after having relieved Morton Cooper in the first half of the eighth with two outs, retiring Phil Rizzuto, was lifted for a pinch hitter in the last half of the eighth, and so Max Lanier, left-hander, has come on, the first left-hander we've seen so far. Lanier won 13 games and lost eight for the Cardinals this season for a pitching percentage of 619. Ralph knees, bent, choked that bat a couple of inches, stands deep in the batter's box, fairly close to the plate. Lanier swoops way down low into the windup. Overhand fastball swung on to smash past Hop. In between Hop and Brown out in the right field for a base hit. Ball fielded by Slaughter thrown in. Brown at second. And Rolfe is on at first base with his second hit. A single to right. And for the Yankees, their 11th hit. Ten off Morton Cooper, who went the first seven and two-thirds innings. None off Harry Gumbert, who pitched only one batter in the eighth. And one now off Max Lanier. Here's Roy Cullenbine, switch hitter who for the first time is batting right-handed in this game. Of course, the Cardinals having used Cooper and Gumbert, both right-handers. Colin Bynes was up there batting left-handed, although he didn't have a chance to get up against Gumbert. But he's batting right-handed against left-handed Lanier. The first pitch is a bunt off the left plate, a nice bunt. Lanier goes over, picks the ball up, throws over high over his head. On his way to third is Roth. The ball rolling out near the bullpen. Roth rounds third, coming in. Going to second is Colin Bynes. He's streaking into third. The throw comes into the plate. Cut off by Johnny Hopp. Winding up at third is Cullenbein on that bunt. Scoring was Red Rolf. Cullenbein got off a nice bunt to the left of the plate and near a streak off the mound, picked the ball up, wheeled through toward first. Jimmy Brown wasn't quite at the baggage yet, but did manage to get over, but the throw was high over his head, rolled out to the Yankee bullpen. 
And so that scored as a sacrifice for Helen Bynes, the nearest charge with an error on his wild throw. No run batted in for Cullen Bynes. One run does come in. Yankees lead now by a score of 6 to nothing. Nobody out. Here's Joe DiMaggio, who has had three hits and four times at bat. Here's the payoff pitch. Joe swings and smashes this one back to the box on one hop. Going back to third is Cullen Bynes. The throw over to hop in time for the out on DiMaggio. There's a hot shot right back to the box, but Lanier spurred it on one hop of his gloved hand. One away. Charlie Keller steps up. One out. First half of the ninth inning, six to nothing favor the Yankees. And they're all set for the payoff pitch throws. Keller takes it, and this one's outside. Ball four. Keller walks. Base on balls number one, given up by Max Lanier, the fourth Yankee to receive free transportation to first base today. Coming up now is Joe Gordon. Special figures on the attendance. And the proceeds from the first game of the World Series are being read out over the press box loudspeaker. And we'll pass them along to you in just a moment. Lanier takes his stretch, checks his runners. There's the throw over to first. No soap. Keller back safely. Going over to cover third. As the throw gets away to, from uh, Lanier and speaking into the plate is Cullen Bynes to score. As Johnny Hopps throw back from first base, got away from the left-hander. And Cullen Bynes simply streaked in from third base to score the second run of the inning for the Yankees. To make it 7 to nothing. And now error for Lanier. And the error has Lanier. been charged to Max Lanier. Lanier lets the ball just hit his glove and roll off and rolled out toward the hole between third and short by the time he could get to it. Cullen Bynes across the plate. Two errors committed in this inning by St. Louis. Four in the ball game for the Cardinals. Here's the pitch to Gordon. He swings and he misses. Strike three. For the third straight time, Joe Gordon struck out. Strikeout number one for Lanier. And that's the eighth Yankee to have gone down by way of the strikeout route. Sixteen men who struck out all told. Coming up now is Bill Dickey. Safe on an error by Jimmy Brown, the second. Walked in the fourth, single to right in the sixth and eighth innings. The official attendance today, ladies and gentlemen, 34385 Total receipts, $151,797. And they're all set. Here's his pitch to Dickey. Bill swings on it, sends a bounder to Hop, who takes it on one hop, steps on the bag, and retires Dickey unassisted. That's all for the Yankees, the first half of the ninth. Two runs came in, one hit, two errors, one man left on base. And so the score at the end of eight and a half innings. Both Seven to nothing in favor of the Yankees. You both probably heard in the background unearned. the official decision that both runs in the ninth inning were unearned. It's always set for the last half of the ninth inning. Stan Musial will lead off. He'll be followed by Walker Cooper and then by Johnny Hopp. Ruffing is limbering up easily. Buddy Roser has come out back to the plate to catch Ruff while Bill Dickey puts on his catching paraphernalia. Joe Gordon, Phil Rizzuto chatting out at second base. Joe standing there waiting to throw down. Tomorrow, we possibly, mere conjecture, of course, because we don't know officially, but tomorrow we probably will see Ernie Bonham going for the Yankees and Johnny Beasley for the St. Louis Cardinals. Then again... You might see somebody else. But you will know who it'll be when you tune in for the second game of the World Series. Brought to you exclusively by Gillette. First pitch in to Stan Musial as we open the last half of the ninth. It's right in there for a call strike. Remember the time will be the same. Ruffing goes into his windup. Musial awaiting the pitch. Here it is. He swings on it, pops it up to the right of the plate. Dickey looking for the ball. Now he finds it, starts running over toward the Yankee dugout, makes the catch for the out. And one away for the Cardinals in the last half of the ninth. Bill Dickey taking care of the first out in the last half of the ninth. He's caught a grand game with Red Ruffing turning in one of the most notable pitching performances in World Series history. Went into the eighth inning with two outs before he allowed the first hit. That a single by Terry Moore. Up now is Walker Cooper. First pitch to him. Swung on to smash. Deep to third. Bounces off the glove of Red Rock. He can't find the ball. Now he does, but not in time to make the throw. And on at first base Thank is you. Walker Cooper, and it scored as a base Thank hit. You. A hot smash off the glove of Red Rock. Ball rolled up his, off his glove, up his arm, and in back of him. 
By the time he found it, Cooper was on it, first base with the second hit off roughing. The first one was a solid line drive in the right field off the bat of Terry Moore in the eighth inning after two were out. Coming up now is Johnny Hopp. Bats him left-handed. Hopp popped to Rizzuto in the second, struck out in the fourth, by to Keller in the seventh. Roughing stretches, pitches. Hopp takes it over there for a called strike. Seven to nothing, favor the Yankees, last half of the ninth inning, first game of the World Series. Red all set. Checks Cooper, then pitches to Hop, who swings and drives one out into left field. Charlie Keller is getting under it, and he makes the catch for the out, and they're two down. Walker Cooper, halfway to second, comes back to first. Throw in escapes Rizzuto, but backing him up is Joe Gordon. Two away, and the batter, scheduled to be Whitey Kurowski. Looks as if we may have a pinch hitter. We do. Ray Sanders. Ray Sanders, who started out the early part of the season playing first base for the Cardinals and then gave way to Johnny Hopp. Left-handed batters up there, pinch hitting for Whitey Kurowski. First pitch to Sanders. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Sanders looks like a rather slender boy up there, but packs a lot of power. Ruffing bobs the ball around his pitching glove. Checks Walker Cooper, leading off first. Red ready. Here's the pitch. It swung on and missed for strike two. No balls, two strikes. Whitey Kurowski, for whom Ray Sanders is batting, was struck out three times by roughing, and Kurowski's only three appearances at the plate. Next pitch to Sanders. A little bit low outside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Cooper has short lead off first. But he has it just in back of him, not on the bag with him. Ruffing looks over. Nice steps onto the hill. Gets the sign from Dickey into the stretch. Sanders bent at the knees awaiting the pitch, and it comes. It swung on and fouled off back of the plate, coming down onto the screen. Dickey couldn't get it. One ball, two strikes to count on the pinch hitter. Second pinch hitter we've had. Ruffing goes back to the mound like... Kicks the dirt in front of that rubber, pitching characteristic of his. Spud Chandler is loosening up in the Yankee bullpen, and so is Marvin Brewer. Chandler might go tomorrow. Here's the pitch. Inside. Ball two. Two to the count. Nothing taking his time, as he has throughout the game. Pitching easily, smoothly. And doing a pretty good job of it, not permitting a hit until the eighth inning. After two are out. Here it is. The pitch is high. Outside for ball three. And so the count is run out. On Ray Sanders, batting for Whitey Kurowski here in the last half of the ninth inning of the first game of the World Series with the Yankees leading seven to nothing. Walker Cooper on at first base, two outs. Sanders holds that bat down the bend of the handle. Buddy has it playing a deep first base. Not being concerned at all now with Walker Cooper. Ruffing takes a stretch. Pitches. There goes the runner. The pitch is outside for ball four. And Sanders walks, sending Walker Cooper down to second base. So with two outs here in the last half of the ninth inning, we have Walker Cooper on second. Ray Sanders on it first. And the batter is Marty Marion. Cardinal shortstop who struck out in the second inning, grounded out to Joe Gordon in the fifth. And popped out or fouled out to Buddy Hassett in the seventh inning. Bats him right-handed. Walker Cooper wanders off second base. Sanders off first to stretch by roughing the pitch. Marion takes a fastball right in there. Strike one call. Ruff looks in to check the sign of Bill Dickey. Runners lead. Here's the pitch. Swung on as the line drive going out to right field, and it is in fair territory. Rounding third, coming in the score is Cooper on his way to third. And rounding it now, coming in is Sanders to throw in from Cullen by not in time. Sliding into third is Marty Marion with a triple. It's a three-base hit for Martin Marion, a line drive down that right field line, scoring... Walker Cooper and Ray Sanders with the first two Cardinal runs of the ball game. The score now, 7-2 to two in favor of the Yankees. Marion credited with two runs batted in. Going to have a pinch hitter for Max Lanier. Ken O'Day. 
Second string catch for the Cardinals, a left-handed hitter. Brewer and Chandler throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Marion leads off third, roughing into the windup throw, so Day, and gets the first one in there for a call strike. Last half of the ninth inning. And for the first time during the ball game, Cardinal fans had something to really let loose about, and they did. Roughing all set for the next pitch to O'Day. Here it is. Ken swings and smashes a bounder. Back a second. Gordon gets his glove on the ball. Can't hold it. The ball caroms off out into center field. Scoring is Marion. On it first is Ken O'Day. The third run comes in for the Cardinals. Score now. 7-3. to three. That probably will be scored as a base hit. Joe Gordon went far to his right. Got his glove hand on the ball. Just a little bit. The ball caromed off into center field. And it scored as a single for O'Day. In the last half of the ninth for St. Louis, after having been held to one hit through the first eight innings, time's called for a moment. Billy Southworth asked Cal Hubbard to call time. I believe we're going to have a runner for O'Day. Looks a little bit like Coker Triplett. I'm not quite sure. I doubt it. Coker's probably on the bench. Crespi, that's who it is. Creepy Crespi. Going to run for Ken O'Day. Jimmy Brown's up there. Brown grounded out to Rizzuto in the first, walked in the third, popped out to Gordon in the sixth, and to Rizzuto in the eighth. First pitch to Brown, swung with the line drive out in the center field for the base hit. DiMaggio takes in the one hop, throws quickly in, and Crespi holds it second. The line single to center for Jimmy Brown. Cardinal fans again have something to roar about. I think that's going to be all for Red Ruffing. And it is. That's all for Ruffing. Listen to the hand for Ruffing as he leaves the mound. The Ruffing leaves the hill after having turned in a brilliant performance until the ninth inning. Going seven and two-thirds innings in this ball game without allowing a hit. Jerry Moore reached him for a solid single to right in the eighth, but he managed to get slaughtered. Turn into ninth inning with two outs and one man on. He walked Sanders batting for Kurowski. Marin tripled. O'Day came through the pinch single. Crespi ran for him and went to second when Jimmy Brown singled to center. And it's Bud Chandler coming in to do the pitching for the Yankees. We're all set to go. Chandler won 16 games and lost five for the Yankees during the regular season for a pitching percentage of 7.62. First man on face will be Terry Moore. Chandler all set now. Crespi moves off second. Brown off first. Here's the pitch to Terry Moore. Swung on to smash out in the left field for a base hit on the ground. Rounding third on his way to score is Crespi. The ball fielded by Keller thrown in the third. Holding it second is Brown. And the Cardinal rally still goes on. in for the Cardinals here in the last half of the ninth inning. All of it coming after two are out and only one man on. For the Yankees leading seven to nothing. The Cardinals with the same flame and fire that sparked their spirited drive for the National League pennant race after they were considered completely out of it has broken loose here in the ninth. Up is Ana Slaughter. Been on first and second. The pitch is in there for a call strike. And the Cardinals fans are up in arms. Jimmy Brown on second base. Terry Moore leading off first base. Ana Slaughter, always a dangerous man. One of the National League's most dangerous clutch hitters up there. Bats him left-handed. The stretch by Chandler, the pitch. The pitch is swung up. The ground ball hit out to Rizzuto. He boots it. And all hands are safe.
official score has given Ana Slaughter credit for a base hit. The ball took a little bad hop. So the bases are loaded with Jimmy Brown on third, Terry Moore on second, and Ena Slaughter on at first base. And the Cardinals have batted around. And here is Dan Musial up to the plate who led off with a score seven to four in favor of the Yankees. The tying runs are on. And here's Musial, stretched by Chandler. Time call for a moment. He steps off the hill. And the Cardinal fans are roaring, as you can hear in the background. Jimmy Brown leads off third. Into the windup goes Chandler, the pitch. It swung on and missed. Strike one as Musial swung hard. He swung from the heel. Marvin Brewer and Jim Turner continue to warm up in the Yankee bullpen. Four runs are in for the Cardinals. The Yankees lead 7-4, to four, and the potential winning run is at the plate. As Chandler goes into the windup, here's the pitch. Musial takes it. It's strike two calls. No balls, two strikes, and Bill Dickey walks out in front of the plate. For returning the ball is Spurgeon Chandler. It's Jimmy Brown on third base. It's Terry Moore on his second base. And on first base is Ena Slaughter. Nine men have batted in this inning for the Cardinals. Chandler and his wind-up runners lead off. Here's the pitch. Mutual takes it, and it's low. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Mutual is the first man up in the inning, coming up for his second time at bat, and that incidentally ties a World Series record. Most times at bat in an inning at two. So his name will be entered in the record books of World Series history. And having tied the record most times at bat in an inning. Chandler into the windup. Here's the pitch. Mutual swings and smacks one on the ground to Buddy Hassett, who comes up with it. Flips to Chandler, who covers first, and the ball game is over. And there it is. A really exciting finish. But the Yankees managed to persevere and win the first game of the 1942 World Series by a score of 7-4. to four. The final out, Mutual grounding the Hess, who flipped to Chandler, who covered first in time for the out. And so for the Cardinals, in the last half of the ninth inning, four runs, one, two, three, four, five, six hits. No Yankee errors. Three men left on for St. Louis. And so here are your totals. For the Yankees, seven runs, 11 hits, no errors, nine men left on base. Seven runs, 11 hits, no errors, nine left on. And for the St. Louis Cardinals, four runs, seven hits, four errors, nine men left on. Nine men left on. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with great pleasure once again, let me present to you Brilliant sports columnist from New York Journal American and a member of Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports Staff, Bill Corum. I had my story all set on red roughing, and I still think that red was the story of this first World Series game beyond any question. Of course, he won today his seventh World Series victory in eight starts and becomes the pitcher, therefore, to win the most World Series games in baseball history. The others who were tied with him up till today, Gomez, uh, Bender and uh, Hoyt, I believe that's correct, the four. But today, Big Red from Gra- uh, Granville and Nocomas, Illinois, now lives out in Long Beach, California, uh, stepped in there and looked for a long time like he might be going to do something that the, even the uh, mighty Yankees have never done before, and that was pitch a no-hit baseball game in this series. That he weakened a little bit at the finish is not surprising. He's no kid anymore, 38 years old. When you get that old, no matter if you're as good as roughing, those last innings begin to wear on you a little bit. And Spurgeon Chandler, the boy from Dixie, had to come in and finish it off. And he looked a little bit rocky, too, when the Cardinals nicked him for two hits. And looked in the ninth inning if they might, as if they might be going to put on an uprising that would upset this ball game after all. But finally, the Yanks gave him the old 7-11, and that's pretty lucky. Seven runs and 11 hits and enough to win 7-4. to four. Cooper pitched fair ball, just fair. Uh, he was hit very hard, and his support wobbled a little bit, and the Cardinals were giving away runs in the last part of the ball game as if they could afford to give them away, and you can't do that with the Yankees. Slaughter had Ruffing's hit uh, into right field, which was scored as a two-base error in his glove. It could have been handled, but it was a very hard hit ball at that. And then, of course, Lanier was throwing the ball around pretty lively and letting a little pitch from Hop roll past the mound to give the Yanks another run. And you can't give them runs and beat them. Not that the Cardinals were going to beat them or beat Ruffing this afternoon. 
I was a little surprised that Chandler should come in there because I had a feeling that uh, he might be going to go in the second game. And when I saw him warming up down there, I thought that he was limbering up perhaps for tomorrow. But apparently that's going to be uh, Bonham, just as a guess. I don't pretend to uh, know for sure who's going to pitch, but just as a guess, Bonham for the Yankees and Beasley for the Cards. Possibly will work out that way. I'm sorry, Ruffing couldn't have gone just a little bit further because it was way back there in the mauve decade when we worried about bicycle tires and not automobile tires when a fella ever pitched a one-hit baseball game. That was Ed Ruleback for Frank Chance's peerless, uh, peerless Frank Chance's uh, Chicago Cubs against the hitless wonders the White Sox on October the 10th, 1906. That's the way back there. And going into the ninth inning, Red had that record uh, in his hand for a tie at least. And of course, until the eighth, he might have gone on to be the first no-hit pitcher in World Series baseball. Uh, it was Herb Pennock, I believe, against the Pirates in uh, 1925, who pitched seven and one-third innings, went into the eighth. 1927 was the date, Mel points out. Went into the eighth inning and got the first batter and then allowed his first base hit. Up to that time, my memory also is that Herb had pitched perfect baseball. Now, tune in tomorrow at 2.15 Eastern Wartime for the second game of this great series. Until then, smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company, Red Barber, Mel Allen, and Bill Corum. This is Mutual.